that's number one. Let's go on to problem number two. Problem number two. This one's pretty simple. P or Q. P, therefore, not Q. So, either I will do P or I will do Q. I do P, therefore, I do not do Q. So that's basically the structure, right? Either I do P or I do Q. I do P, therefore, I do not do Q. Now, again, let's check the validity of this argument using reductio ad absurdum. Step one, what do we do? Step one, we list out all of our statement letters. In here we have P and we have Q, just like before. So we have P and we have Q. Next thing that we want to do is we want to make the distinction between our premise and our conclusion. We have one premise, two premises, and a conclusion. We want, we want this to be true, we want this to be true, and we want this to be false. If I can make these true and this false without inconsistently, inconsistently assigning my truth function by just the appropriation of one truth function, then I know it's invalid. If I have to use two truth functions to attain this, then I know it's valid. Let's see. Okay, this is, this should, again, very simple, right? I want this to be false, therefore, if it's true, then what's not true, what's not true is false. So we know that Q has to be true, right? Not true is false. So we check that off. Again, we want our conclusion to be false and our premise, premise is true. In order for this to be false, I have to assign truth to Q. What's not true is false. Check that off. Okay. I go to premise one. Premise one. P or Q. Well, we know that Q is true. Right? We know that Q is true. And we recognize that where Q is true, well, if Q is true, if this is true, then even if this is true or false, it won't really matter. Right? It won't really matter. What I'll end up doing is I can say that P is true. I can say that P is false. It doesn't matter because as long as Q is true, as long as Q is true, this is true. Right? So for this, we don't really need to worry about, for line one, I don't even really need to worry about P. Right? P is, is um, irrelevant in my analysis. Why is P irrelevant in line one? Why? Because of the disjunct. Because it's a disjunct, I recognize that as long as Q is true, this whole thing is true. Right? So we'll think about P in line two. So we go to line two, and what can we do with P? Well, we can substitute in true on line two. So I plug in true for line two. I plug in true. And then we recognize that in plugging in true for line two to attain this truth, that it would work here, right? If it's true and true, it's true. I plug in true for P, true, true. And I plug in true for false. I mean, I plug in true for Q, not true is false. Well, all I've done is I've plugged in true for P and true for Q, and my argument has an invalid structure, right? Because I have true premises and a false conclusion, right? I have true premises and a false conclusion by just substituting T, true, for this um, statement letter, and true for Q, the statement letter, and I've attained an invalid format. Therefore, we recognize immediately that this argument is invalid, right? An argument cannot have true premises and a false conclusion. If an argument has true premises and a false conclusion, the argument is invalid. We know that this argument is invalid because we did not have to use or assign our um, truth functions inconsistently to the statement letter. What we did was we simply selected one truth function for one statement letter, and insofar as we input that truth function for the statement letter, we arrived at um, an inconsistent or an invalid uh, argument. So we know that number two is invalid. 